Hi friends, welcome to the Abrams Children's Book Spring Summer 2021 Preview. My name is Jenny Choi, I'm the Associate Director of School and Library Marketing. I am a huge fan of picture books and I'm especially excited for Haiwan Yom's latest book, Grandpa Across the Ocean. With her signature colored pencil illustrations, Haiwan shares with us a personal story inspired by her own family. She's even dedicated the book to her father. Readers meet a young child who is visiting his grandfather all the way across the ocean in Korea. Upon arrival, everything smells and sounds strange, and our young protagonist can't help but notice how different he and Grandpa are. Grandpa takes long naps, he eats yucky foods, he speaks an unfamiliar language, his house is the most boring place on earth. Or is it? A little time together reveals that he and Grandpa have much more in common than he thought. They even like the same ice cream flavor. This is Haiwan's favorite image of the book. She says, Whenever we visit Korea in the summer, we go on a trip to the beach. We made so many good memories together. And just looking at the sea from the same place, not from across the ocean, is special to us. In this spread, I wanted to show the sea and highlight how the sand turned pink since they spent the whole day at the beach, and they are looking at the horizon together where the boy lives. At its heart, Grandpa Across the Ocean is about the challenges and joys of having a relative who lives far away, proving that even from across the ocean, the grandparent-grandchild relationship is a strong and special one. And now I'll turn it over to our talented picture book creators. Travis Yonker, author of Blue Floats Away, illustrated by Grant Snyder. I'm also a school librarian. Blue Floats Away is a book about change for kids who might be navigating changes in their own lives. Blue is an iceberg who floats away from his parents. Although he's scared at first, Blue begins to see that the world can be a beautiful place, full of excitement, friendships, but as the temperature begins to rise, Blue begins to melt. And it's time for Blue's biggest and most surprising change yet. I love Grant Snyder's illustrations for this book. He raided his kids' art supplies and made the pictures using cut and torn paper. Blue Floats Away is a great book for talking about the water cycle, climate change, or just a great book to talk about growing up. I hope you get a chance to read Blue Floats Away. Let's do this. We're, We're going. Gonna, We're just gonna dance for two to six minutes. <laughs> Okay, stop. Stop, okay. stop, stop, We gotta get to it. Hi, I'm Shannon Hale. And I'm Leigh Wynn Pham, but you can just call me Wynn or Winnie. And we are best friends. <laughs> <laughs> but we write together um, many books that hopefully um, we've seen in your libraries and classrooms. Yeah. Thank you, educators, and so supportive. So we're on tour, and because we keep working, we're at a cafe. And we just started, how did it start when we were just kind of like, we were sitting having coffee. I think you had your little laptop out. I had I was working on a different, I was revising a manuscript and you were, you were drawing a picture book. I was working on a picture book and we were uh, sort of both chit chatting, which is incredibly something Shannon can do when she writes. I don't understand that, but she can. And, uh, <laughs> We were sitting chatting and I think we were just talking about uh, different manuscripts that we've gotten right. and we were talking about whether or not like how hard it would be to make a character that like I think everybody could just fall in love with quickly and how silly we could be. We were sort of being silly. We were sort of challenging each other with It was like a game. Ending. Yeah, it was a game. Like what can we come up with that um, is just cute and adorable and silly and could you actually sell something like that or is it harder than you think to sell? Yeah, and I was and, like, uh, oh, we couldn't just come up with a picture book. Like you were saying, like you, you're like, you the top of your game. You could yeah. come up with a book idea and I could draw it and, and we could come up with something that worked together. And I was like, it's not that easy. There's no way I can't just come with you. But then but we then started think, pitching ideas back and forth. Right. About stuff and that I are think, like our kids love. Yes, we just started listing off like things that our kids love, like they love cats and they love unicorns and they, you know, just, I think we just went back and forth. Yeah. We sort of came up with an idea, then we both separated, went back to work, right? Yeah. Shannon just did the typing, I went back to my iPad, <laughs> and I want to say like 15 minutes later, I had spent that whole time sketching 
the exact idea that we were talking about. Just because yeah, I couldn't get it out of my be, head. She was supposed to be working on something else, and all of a sudden she turns her iPad to me and she's drawing our little itty bitty kitty corn. And I start to laugh because I had to turn my laptop and show her I wasn't working on the manuscript I was supposed to be working on. Look, I wrote a, the first few stanzas of a picture book about kitty corn because the idea we came up as a joke, we we just couldn't get it out of our heads. We couldn't get it out of our heads. And it was, it. I think what happened was we, we were laughing. We were, we were picking something just ridiculously cute that we thought was almost over the top. But the truth of it was that whatever it was that we hit upon, it had a heart to it that we didn't anticipate. We were really good friends sitting side by side and we started working on this story about friends. We couldn't help but infuse it with like real feelings. And the key to it is friends who see you as you really are. So here's the, one of the first images in the book and it's Kitty. And I don't know how much you know about the book already, but um, this little beautiful kitten here, she uh, sees herself as a unicorn. And apparently nobody else in the world sees her as a unicorn except herself. And she goes about the entire book, what? Trying to convince everyone that she's a unicorn? But then when an, a unicorn shows up and Kitty can see herself by comparison to this unicorn and her friends see that unicorn and she has that moment of realization of that's not me and that's never going to be me and her little heart breaks. I've read this book aloud a lot. Just I just have the manuscript on my computer and I can't help it when I'm around kids. I want to share this story and I can't read those lines without choking up every single time. You know, it feels weird to like praise something that I that I had a hand in, but because we did it together, it doesn't feel like it was just me. It feels like mm -hmm. I mean, obviously it wasn't just me, but it doesn't feel like even like I got to be a part of it, not like I did it. You know what I mean? It's yeah. Like we got to be together when this thing was born rather than we forced it to be born. I, I keep saying that that we were sort of just lucky to catch the train as it was flying by. It was like something was going, something was heading in this direction. Shannon and I managed to meet on the platform at the same time and jumped on the train, but it was something past us that was the impetus <laughs> to get this thing going. It really wasn't us. It felt like a story that just had always existed and we found the words in the pictures for it and we're just lucky that we did. And yeah. I think that's why it's such a special story. And All right, I say we party out of this. We're done. Hola, ¿qué tal? Mi nombre es Blanca Gómez, soy ilustradora, también soy autora ahora porque he escrito mi primer libro para niños y por eso estoy aquí, para hablaros un poquito de él. El libro se llama Big House, esta es la portada, un pájaro en casa en español, pues también hay edición en español. Y cuento una historia muy sencillita de una abuela y de su nieta que encuentran un pájaro un día en la nieve herido y lo llevan a casa para cuidarlo y para cuidarlo. Y bueno, luego cuenta todo lo que pasa a partir de ese momento. La abuela está muy inspirada en mi abuela, la Antonieta, y la niña está muy inspirada en mí. Y la historia está muy inspirada en algo que nos pasó realmente cuando yo era pequeña pasaba mucho tiempo en casa de mi abuela y encontramos un pájaro herido. Y bueno, como he dicho, es una historia muy sencilla, pero a la vez tiene más chicha de la que parece. Y al final la niña creo que aprende de forma sutil, su abuela le va enseñando cosas que yo considero importantes. Me han pedido que escoja una página del libro para hablar de cómo he trabajado en las artes finales. Y he escogido esta página en la que salimos mi abuela y yo leyendo un libro y el gato está lo suyo persiguiendo al pajarito. He escogido esta página por varias razones. En primer lugar, porque es completamente cierto. Todo era fantástico en casa de mi abuela y es un buen resumen del libro. En segundo lugar, es porque fue una de las primeras páginas en las que trabajé y me ayudó mucho a encontrar el tono del libro que estaba buscando. Estuve muy bloqueada porque para mí era muy importante ver a mi abuela, ya que estaba inspirado en mi abuela real, ver a mi abuela en los dibujos del libro. Y hice un montón de bocetos, a lápiz, digitales, pero no encontraba a mi abuela. Veía una señora muy maja, pero no era la Antonieta. No era reconocible. Para mí era importante yo, al menos, ver a mi abuela. Hasta que un día un poco harta de tanto boceto y de no encontrar un camino, eh, dije, bueno, pues voy a trabajar en la imagen final del libro y la voy a trabajar con una técnica distinta. En vez de buscar tantos bocetos, voy a trabajar con colas y, 
que es UDC, recortar, a pegar, a recortar. Y en dos minutos tenía ya a mi abuela leyendo un libro en el sofá. Por fin la podía reconocer. Así que bueno, eso fue una luz en la oscuridad y decidí a partir de entonces hacer el libro con colas porque además creo que me pega mucho al libro y refleja muy bien ese toque de nostalgia y un poco de, de imperfección que quería transmitir en, en este libro. La segunda razón por la que he escogido esta página para hablar de ella es porque refleja muy bien cómo he trabajado en los artes finales del libro. Como habéis visto, la primera imagen que os he enseñado de la abuela leyendo un libro en el sofá, el sofá era verde y en la imagen final del libro el sofá era rojo. Esto me pasa un montón. Hago un montón de cambios en, a lo largo del proceso de crear un libro. Así que me daba un poco de miedo hacer todas las páginas en colas originales y luego no tener la capacidad de hacer miles y miles de cambios, como siempre hago. Por lo tanto, decidí hacer un colas independiente de cada elemento de la página y luego componerlo, juntarlo todo en el ordenador. La verdad es que es un libro muy especial para mí y he disfrutado un montón trabajando en él y recordando todos los detalles de casa de mi abuela y de mi infancia y poniéndolos en el libro y bueno, espero que todo esto se note en el libro final. Muchas gracias. Hello everybody. Greetings from Hillsdale, New York. I'm Christian Trimmer, and though I'd much prefer to be seeing you in real life, I am very thankful to have this opportunity to talk with you about my newest picture book, The Little Things, a story about acts of kindness, art by the brilliant Keilani Juanita. I was inspired to write The Little Things after a conversation with my physical therapist, of all people. Uh, his then-girlfriend worked for a not-profit that was founded on the ideal that small acts of kindness, little things, could make a big difference And I've always believed in that, and I wanted to write a story about it. So the first thing I did was I imagined a fierce little girl with a strong commitment to her community. And then I started to think about the people around her and the neighborhood she lived in, and how her acts of kindness and bravery might spark change. Her act of kindness, which involves saving some sea stars that have washed ashore after a violent storm, triggers a whole series of events. And as I write in the book, uh, her actions lead to more ideas, more generosity, more kindness, and more action. Most of the characters aren't aware of how their acts of kindness inspire those around them, and I think that might be my favorite aspect of the story, and I think it's a really powerful message for kids. I also made a point of having little kids inspire not only their classmates, but also teens and adults. I think that's important too, to show children that they have power, that they can impact the grown-ups around them. At its core, I'd say The Little Things is about community. And I've been so deeply moved by um, how communities have come together this year um, in small ways like delivering groceries to those in need and even the rainbows that appeared in many windows in New York City and I think around the country um, and in much grander ways like with the marches for black lives and trans lives and the outpouring of support for those affected by the wildfires. Story aside, I challenge you not to fall in love with Keilani's art. You're gonna find so many wonderful details and humor and hearts that there's so much passion. And I mean, I have to call it the fashion too. Just look at all of these stylish characters. I also want you to know that um, we did some research about sea stars and touching sea stars. And we included a little note um, on the copyright page. It's a little instructions for kids and adults um, and how to, to handle sea stars and how not to handle sea stars. I hope you enjoy The Little Things, a story about acts of kindness, and please stay safe and be well, and I look forward to seeing you all really soon in the near future. Hi, my name is Leah Henderson. I am the author of A Day for Remembering, illustrated by the wonderfully talented Floyd Cooper. It is a fictionalized account of what some believe to be the first Memorial Day or Decoration Day as it used to be known. About four years ago, I was doing research for another book and I stumbled upon an image of a group of black children standing in an open field saluting another black child who was holding an American flag 
and I immediately became intrigued and I wanted to know all about this image and, and where it was taken and what was going on. And I did a little bit more research, did a little bit of digging, and I came to two things. Um, first of all, the image is actually of a flag day in the late 1800s, and it was taken in Virginia outside of Hampton. Then I also came across a, another link for the image that had to do with a moment in history during 1865. On May Day, 1865, in Charleston, South Carolina, a group of nearly 10,000 formerly enslaved men, women, and children, including 300 from freedmen schools, along with ministers, abolitionists, and some white citizens of Charleston, South Carolina, marched to a jockey racetrack, which had been converted into a union prison during the Civil War. And they marched there because they wanted to decorate the graves of fallen Union soldiers. And when I came across this information after stumbling on this picture, I was just so fascinated by what had taken place first. And then just really curious about another moment that I had never heard about in our nation's history. And it felt like it needed to be told and I needed to find my way into this information to share it with kids. And I kept stumbling around until I thought of my main protagonist, Eli, who Floyd Cooper's illustrations have brought to life in a way that I couldn't even imagine. This journey with this story, which, which is about a moment that is a hard moment in our history, right? But through Eli, you see it through the eyes of someone who knows that it is a moment to be remembered. And so when you read the pages of this story, I hope you will come to be more curious about moments that are probably little known, moments that have been um, hidden from us, moments that have been overlooked, um, and, and dig them out and search for more of them because these are important moments in our history for us all to know. And so I hope you will enjoy a day for our moment. Thank you. Hi, I'm Shelly Johannes, and I'm so excited to tell you about my debut picture book, More Than Sunny, which follows a pair of siblings as they journey through the seasons of the year and discover that the weather is always more than weather, and that maybe there really is something better than a sunny day. I want to share this spread from early in the book with you, where the enthusiastic sister first drags her reluctant brother outside to prove to him that the day is more than sunny and early, that it's actually sunny and birdy. Not only does this page encapsulate the heart of the story, it's also really sentimental for me because this moment is the moment that sparked the idea for the story in the first place. When my older son was a first grader, he was working on a weather project for school on one of those charts with the columns for sunny and windy and cloudy and rainy and snowy. And he looked outside and said, it's sunny and birdy. And the next day he looked outside and said it was windy and squirrely. And I remember being so delighted with his answers because he was given these very uh, mundane, preconceived choices. And instead of seeing those, he looked outside and saw something so much more beautiful instead. The whole process of making this book from beginning to end has been a total joy. From that first little teeny tiny book dummy that I made through every meandering iteration of this along the way, I had so much fun. So as I moved into final art, I wanted to guarantee myself that I would continue in that same spirit of play and not take myself too seriously. So I decided to continue to work by hand um, on tracing paper because I love the risk of working by hand and all those happy accidents and smudges and surprises that show up on the page. And then I decided to experiment with some new materials in my final artwork. So I drove to the art supply store and grabbed a bunch of different kinds of pastels and anything that caught my eye. And then I just went home, dumped them all out on my table and started to mess around. And I had so much fun with every little detail, like playing around with the grass and the trees and mixing materials to see what kind of textures I could get. And so through the very last drawing, I was making new little discoveries and um, 
really having a blast the entire time. So I hope that More Than Sunny inspires people to see the world in new ways every day and to get outside and enjoy it with someone they love. Hi, my name is Donna Barba Higuera and I am the author of El Cucuy is Scared Too, illustrated by Juliana Perdomo. The idea for El Cucuy is Scared Too came about through a writing prompt, and that prompt was, write a picture book about the thing that scared you most as a child and try to make it not so frightening. And I thought about this. Uh, there were many things that scared me as a child, but I believe what scared me the most was a story that a cousin visiting from Mexico had told me about El Cucuy, amongst other frightening Mexican folklore. And this story had to do with if you didn't do what you were told or you didn't eat your vegetables, that El Cucuy would come steal you away. So I had asked my grandmother about this at one point, and she had told me that if I didn't go to sleep one night, she said, El Kukui will come get you. So I decided that El Kukui lived in my grandmother's closet and I would lay awake with my eye cracked and waiting to see if El Kukui was really there and would come get me. But while writing this book, I also thought about what scared other children. And I had another cousin who had moved from Mexico and I think we were about in the third or fourth grade and I remember his fears of his clothing and the way he spoke and and wondering if the um, language differences would be an issue for him and I realized that his fears at that time which were a very realistic fear were just as valid if not way scarier than my El Kukui so I decided to merge the ideas in this book and in the book I basically show how the fear of El Kukui and the fear of moving can, they're both very frightening, but how Ramon in the book and El Kukui team together to conquer their fears. I discovered through the process that Juliana Perdomo, who is the illustrator, who is from Bogota, Colombia, has a version of El Kukui, which many um, Latin American countries do, and they all go by a little bit of a different name. Hers was El Coco, or El Coco. And um, with that said, it's one of those books that I hope that children and adults alike will read and see that we can conquer our fears um, with teamwork and by understanding others' fears and having empathy. Thank you. Hey everybody, I'm Sabrina and... And I'm Eunice. And we are the author and... Illustrator. <laughs> behind School is Cool. School is Cool is our brand new book celebrating how awesome school is. And addressing kind of the back to school jitters, the fears that kids might have, whether they're going to school for the first time or coming back to school, maybe going to a new school and celebrating all the wonderful things about school from using your imagination and being creative to what to do in circle time, raise your hand, <laughs> uh, to having a growth mindset that everyone is here to, to grow and it's okay to say, I don't know. All the things we want kids to understand about school and to look forward to um, in school. Yeah, so I mean, uh, so for us, we had a lot of experience with starting in new schools. We both, we grew up overseas. Our dad was a diplomat and we spent almost our entire childhood in Southeast Asia and North Africa, changing schools every three years. So we are very, very familiar with the first day of school, both the excitement and the anxiety and how hard it is to make new friends when you don't know anyone. It's really just brutal, but it can also be super amazing and fulfilling. And once you get comfortable, it's fantastic. Our intent behind this book is to really get kids laughing and comfortable and address directly some of the concerns and fears they might have about school and reassure them um, that school is a place where they're gonna be able to be creative and make new friends and grow and learn and that they're gonna have a support of adults there um, to guide them through and that it's gonna be a great experience. So that is our goal and our wish. So, and our favorite part about the book is the end. We have a back to school cheer, which you're welcome to share <laughs> with students, which is what's good, better, best? School. What totally rules? School. School is cool. Yeah. Cool. Yes. Requisites 
sparkle hands.